Lamy is a full-stack, rapidly growing insurtech, delivering embedded insurance products with worldwide coverage and covering the whole insurance value chain. Thanks to their API processes and connected digital platforms, Lamy is able to develop solutions with fast time to market, giving their affiliate partners access to a big insurance market. Today, Christian Padak, CEO of Lamy, will share his vision on embedded insurance with us. What is needed to make it a success and what the future will bring us. Please welcome Christian Padak. I want to hear you. I need you more, please. Thank you for having me. I'm very proud that I can present very relevant topics about embedded insurance. What's next? Embedded insurance has been the holy grail praised to conquer insurance world, the insurance world. Unprecedented. Still, <laughs> I'm sorry, we don't see any relevant success stories. Why is that? Why is embedded insurance not breaking through? Why is embedded insurance still just a startup concept? And what what is the what is the what is the, uh, the what are the ingredients um, for success? Well, for that, we need to look into the future. And honestly, to understand the future, we need to understand the past. Because the future is only a deflection of the past. Well, in the good old days, when I was a kid, the world has been in shape. Everything has been structured. And everything has been in, in a nice order. Insurers were doing insurance business. And reinsurers were doing reinsurance business. Still, at some stage, insurers started to get involved in reinsurance business. And reinsurers started to get in insurance business and take away the market share. Still, the world has not changed. Even when Enron collapsed and put in 2001 the, the financial world in, into, into havoc and madness, still the world remained in its traditional nice shape. What happened then? The digital re revolution just blurred everything. All the rules, which have been applicable until then, just changed. Suddenly, everybody had a voice. Everybody had a stage. Everybody had a message. Synchronous TV was not applicable anymore. It was gone. Only a few old people were sitting in front of their TV screens and following the main news in the evening. Information has been available at our fingertips at any time, at any place. Institutions lost their knowledge privilege. Institutions lost their information privilege. And institutions lost their communication privilege. What else happened? Well, it came the age of big tech. Suddenly, enabled by deregulation and by digitalization, in the year 2016, we have seen big tech companies just kicking out the incumbent companies out of their seat. Until then, companies from the oil and energy sector, from the financial services sector, from the conglomerates have been dominating the world in size, in volume, um, unchallenged uh, large companies. But these big companies um, were not big anymore suddenly. With a market capitalization of over $600 billion, Exxon Valdez ranked number one, unprecedented number one. And at that time, nobody believed that any company could grow any bigger. And suddenly, big tech companies just kicked the old dinosaurs by volume and by size out of their seats. With a market capitalization of $350 million, uh, billion dollars in 2006, Exxon ranked only number five. 
in 2016, 10 years later. How that happened? What was the receipt for success? A new breed of companies took over, the platform companies. Platform companies, like Simon Torrance is putting it in his book, are not using physical assets as oil companies, as telcos. Financial companies, big tech, sorry, big tech companies are not using financial assets as banks. Big tech companies are using an, an, an asset which is even not accounted for in their balance sheet. They are engaging in relational business. When they're adding services, they are not diversifying their offering. Diversification is something else. What they're really doing is they're spiraling growth. With every service they're adding, they're spiraling growth. And where does, it, where does that lead us? This, lead, this leads us to spiraling wheels of growth and, and success. A simple explanation. When Amazon had been a brick and mortar store and added their digital sales system, they were progressing a little bit. They got faster, they got efficient, more efficient, and they reached out for a larger customer base. But when Amazon decided to add third-party products to their marketplace, suddenly one and one has been more than two. So in simple numbers, with one million customers, with standard Amazon offerings, added with third-party offerings, another million customers suddenly brought them six million customers. Why? Because customers got a bigger offering. Customers got a bigger choice, and suddenly, Amazon not only has redeployed their current IT system um, to service another vendor, suddenly they grew and scaled their customer base. And I would argue what is true for the digital master companies is as well true for us in Shortex. We need to connect the spinning wheels of success to connect and to drive each other and to add scaling in an unprecedented way. What can we achieve? If you're looking at the most successful company, uh, which is running Philip Morris as a brand, they generated 2,000% growth in 40 years. Uber did the same amount of growth in eight years. And this is how the digital master companies are working. And now you will understand that for us insure tax, it is not sufficient to just digitalize one part of the value chain and offer digital insurance as just another embedded product uh, with a tick box in the sales channels. This is neither significant, nor can we be proud about that, nor does that achieve the scaling which is needed to survive in the wilderness governed by big tech companies. What are, the, what are these big tech companies doing? In my view, they're celebrating their networking party because with this very important asset of relationship, there comes a different task and agenda for the management. Just let me give another example. When Volkswagen established their production in China many years ago, it was basically a simple contract. We build a factory and we sell cars. And since then, they have been selling an unprecedented amount of cars. Now Volkswagen is engaging in shared mobility. This is a relationship business. This is not one contract anymore. You need to manage, you need to attract, and you need to take care for many partners, for many vendors. You need to build joint ventures, you need to build uh, complex M&A structures. And these businesses, these relationship businesses, they're handled and they're governed by milliard by milliard of complex relational contracts, not just 
the established vendorship anymore. What does that mean for us? Well, CEOs of the incumbent companies, they don't like this big tech business. They need to sit on a chair which is very inconvenient and quite hot. Their, their, ROI, their ROE is flat, flat over more than a decade. I cannot see many incumbent companies with an ROE curve going up. And as a major KPA for success, that's an issue. Market valuation, flat. Profit, under stress. Margin, under stress. Well, I can recommend a couple of books. What got you here won't get you there. The corporate startup shows in a very nice and efficient way how you can breathe startup air and startup spirit into your established incumbent company listed on the stock exchange, being very successful, but not scaling anymore. What does that mean? You might be a very big fish in a very big pond, and your competitors might be behind you. But from the same industry, from your own industry, there might be the one or other digital startup digging into your margin, digging into your customer base. And not only from the same industry, it might be as well from a totally different industry. Or somebody from totally new looking at your industry as a commodity. And if a hyperscaling digital company, very well capitalized, looks at you as a, as a commodity, they might easily take you out of your ocean and add you for free to their platform to increase their growth. Just listen to Jeff Bezos. Your margin is my opportunity. That's a very big hook he's throwing into the ocean. Happy? Can't believe so. Already in 2018, Professor Michael G. Jacobides, Jacobides wrote an article in the Harvard Business Review, the ecosystem, the, eco the ecosystem economy, what's your strategy? And very bold here on the stage, I would argue that very few companies have developed a true ecosystem strategy. Just recap, a couple of points Mr. Uh, Professor Jacobides is making in his article. Are you building an ecosystem? Do you take care of your customers or do you take care of your own? So you're putting into your company what you would like, what makes you proud as CEO. Are you building an ecosystem? Are you digitalizing your company? Really? Oh, excuse me, that's boring. This is really boring because this is your homework. This is the standard exercise we have to do. If we are proud that we are cutting costs by application of digital processes, if we are saving paper, if we are saving office space, this is our responsibility against our ecosystem and against our customers. Me as a customer, I would expect from a company efficient processes and a friendly service. It is not only the standard homework, it as well doesn't move the digital needle. Nowhere can we achieve with digitalizing our processes the scaling and the growth which is required to compete with the big tech companies. If we are not careful, and if we are not serious about that, they will be taking us out of the ocean. And so now I'm talking about big techs and incumbent companies. I'm an insurtech. And what I want to explain here is, 
If I'm as an introtech only offering digital insurance by digitalizing certain processes, I am going nowhere. I will not be on the stage and I will not see you anymore next year because you will not be sitting here if you would be doing the same. We need to augment insurance. We need to enrich insurance. And then embedded insurance has a chance to become relevant. There's one ingredient. Imagine insurance which is reaching out to your customers in the moment they need it. And they are dependent on you helping them in a very different, difficult situation. I know that after the event of insurance is not the, the, the name of the game, but let's think about that. Let's be imaginative. If you think about incumbent companies, why is it difficult? Why is it so difficult to escape from the success trap? We are sitting in the boardrooms, very nice mahogany cladding, and we are caught in the optimization loop. How can we cut costs? How can we buy cheaper goods? And how can we sell that more expensive? This is the typical optimization loop. Large companies nowadays with a multi-billion dollar sheet, balance sheet, are caught in. And just go back to your, to your, to your region when the company is young when the company was just an idea. We have been fighting, you have been fighting, to establish that idea and to make that idea happen. First phase. Second phase, the phase of growth. You were focusing on growing that idea. You were focusing on growing that customer base. And when you got so successful as you are today, you started optimizing, and this is what you're still doing. Your employees are doing that. Your culture is geared toward that. Procurement-based processes get it cheap, sell it expensive. This will not bring us anywhere. This will not provide disruption. And equally, for embedded insurance companies, we need to connect our spinning wheels of success. We need to explain to incumbent companies, if we want to work together with them, what will move their needle. And believe me, this is not one single insurance added to a digital process. Action is needed. Again, in the boardroom, oh, we see these digital master companies. Very impressive. Let's do the same. Let's build a platform. Let's build an ecosystem. And let's scale unprecedented growth. Not that fast. There's the LeBron James challenge. LeBron James, uh, James is 2, two meters 10, 2 meters 20 tall. He can throw a basketball from 10 meter and hit. He can dunk the ball without any issue. He has been training for his whole life. And he has been specializing in doing so. So it's, not, it's just not possible to change that culture within one day. It's a process. And it, it's, it's time to, to start that process. And it's time to get serious about it. If we listen to Richard Buckminster Fuller, he has been a great character. He has been a visionary. He made things happen and he built things as an architect as well, which are still unprecedented. And he says, if you want to change existing systems, don't fight them. Build a new model and make the existing model obsolete so it's replaced. And we need to start now. Because being wrong might hurt a little. Being slow will kill you. So, some steps to recap for embedded insurance to be, to be the prevailing success story of the insurance industry in the future. Get out of the optimization loop. Take your partners out of their optimization loop. Make them prepared to do something new. And if we do something new, that's not that easy. Because as an incumbent company, we have our measures. 
we know exactly how to measure, how to measure success. Well, CFOs hate the platform model. CFOs like to connect two dots with a growth, with a growth, with linear growth, with predictable linear growth. In platform economy, it will take some years until you will find your growth. It might be very flat to scale up rapidly. So if we don't onboard our CEOs and our CEO, CFOs on time, they will hate us so much that that business will not be happening. Technology. I'm seeing technology deployed in order to survey, in order to bind our clients. How come that when I buy a Porsche in Germany to drive it as fast as I can on the German motorway, that I'm surveyed by my insurance company and I'm penalized for driving fast? Only because I'm driving fast? Is it really that I drive bad? Or do we just don't have the technology to assess if somebody is driving fluently? Well, and let's connect our flywheels of success so that we are not just adding another client, another partnership, so that the partnerships are spiraling up and inspiring themselves so that one plus one is more than two. It is difficult to team up with, incum with incumbent indust industry partners, exactly for that reasons. But we should not be scared, we should not we should not stop and we should push them to change their course even if they're sitting in a very large vessel. In order to stay relevant, my recommendation and what my company is doing with Flamy, adhere the rule book of success of the big tech companies and develop insurance products for the better. I hope you found my perspectives relevant. If you're interested, please find me, contact me, talk to us. We are so much looking forward to scale together with you and to write the book of insurance to a new level. Thank you.